Hi, today we will create some animated hand-drawn markers in DaVinci Resolve 17 and save them in a template so that we can reuse them in the edit page for presentation or training videos. With selections in a drop-down list, we can switch between different markers easily. With the color and size controls in the inspector of the edit page, it's simple to adjust the marker to the look and feel that meet our needs. As usual, we create a fusion composition, double-click to open it in the fusion page. Drag a background node from the toolbar to the node editor. While the background node is selected, click the paint icon in the toolbar, a paint node is now added after the background. Connect the paint node to the media out. Select the background node, change the alpha value to zero so that it becomes transparent. Select the paint node, Choose the Stroke tool in the Viewer toolbar. Go to the Inspector. Reduce the brush size to 0.005. In the Stroke Control section, set the spacing to 0. Go back to the Viewer, hold down the left mouse button, and draw a straight line. Drawing with a mouse may need some practice. You can press Ctrl Z to undo your drawing until you get the one you like. Next, we draw an arrow and a circle. Go to Inspector, in the Modifiers tab, right-click Stroke 1, choose Rename, Enter Line as the new name. Respectively we rename Stroke 2 to Arrow, and Stroke 3 to Circle. We now have three marker strokes available, but often we need only one marker at a time. We need to find a way to show the marker we want, and hide others in the meantime. In the Settings tab, there is a parameter called Blend, Set its value to zero will hide the stroke. We will add a simple expression with conditions to adjust the value. To make it work, we need a control parameter that we can use in the simple expression. Right-click the line label, select Edit Controls. In the Edit Control, enter marker type in the Name field. Make sure the type is Number, leave the page value to the default user page, so that this new parameter will appear in the User tab. In the input control list, select combo control, a new set of inputs appear. Enter line in the items field, click add button to add it to the list, continue adding arrow and circle to the list. After the list is done, click the OK button to confirm. In the inspector, we see that a user tab is added to the line stroke control. Open the user tab, the marker type combo list is now available for selection. We have three items in the drop-down. The number value of each item is controlled by their orders in the list, starting from zero. In this case line is zero, arrow is one and circle is two. Go to the settings tab, enter equals sign in the blend field. A simple expression field appears underneath. Enter the condition expression. This one means, Set the blend parameter to 1 if the marker type equals 0, otherwise set the value to 0. If we are not certain the name of the marker type parameter, we can also use pick whip to link the parameter. Start dragging a whip from the add button. In this case, since the parameter is in another tab, we first drag the whip to the user tab label. It will open the tab temporarily, keep holding down the mouse button, move over to the marker type, release the button it will switch back to the previous tab. The name of the marker type appears in the expression field, we can now modify the expression to what we want. Once the expression is done, go back to the user tab, select different marker types. The line is now only visible when the selection is line. Repeat the same steps to the blend parameter for the arrow and circle strokes. As the marker type is defined inside the line stroke, we use pick whip to connect the marker type and modify the expression. For arrow, we change the condition value to 1. And for the circle, the value is 2. Now we have the marker type selection control, there will be only one marker visible in the view at one time. We can move all strokes to the center of the view. In the stroke controls, 
Right-click the center, choose Set to Default, both Center X and Y are set to 0.5, which is the center of screen. Continue to reset arrow and line center value. We can also simply double-click the center label to set the parameter back to default. Now if we go to the user tab of the line stroke, change the marker type, and the markers are showing according to the selection. Next step is to have one set of color and size controls to adjust all marker colors. If we change the color of line stroke or the size, it's not affecting the arrow, as you can see here. To resolve this, we will use simple expressions to link color and size controls of arrow and circle to the ones in the line stroke. Open the arrow control panel in the modifiers tab, enter equals sign in the size field. Pick whip to connect it to the line size parameter. Once they are connected, adjusting the size of the line stroke also changes the arrow size. Continue to connect the softness and color parameters. Now if we change the line color, the arrow's color is also changed. Repeat the steps for the circle stroke to also connect size, softness and color parameters with the lines. In case you have a pen drawing tablet, the paintbrush size can be set to pressure sensitive, which makes the hand drawing strokes more realistic. The next step is to animate the strokes to simulate a hand drawing. Select line in the marker type list. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning. In the stroke control section, enable keyframe for right on parameter, change the end value to zero, so the line disappears. Move playhead to frame 15, set the right on end value to one, so that it's fully drawn. Continue to set keyframes for arrow and circles right on parameter. We can also simply right click the end dot of right on parameter and choose connect to line. End, which will link the keyframe settings from the line stroke automatically. We now have completed the fusion composition of these animated hand drawn markers. Next, we will save this as a macro template so that we can reuse it in the edit page. Select both background and paint nodes, right click and choose macro. Create macro. In the macro editor window, name the macro essential markers. From the line stroke list, export the size, softness and color control parameters for the macro. Also include the marker type from lines user tab. Choose save as group from the file menu, and in the Save As window, save the macro to Fusion. Templates. Edit. Generators folder. If it's the first time saving a macro, you may need to create these folders manually. Close the macro editor window, go back to the edit page. In the effects library, open generators and find the newly saved essential markers, add it to the timeline. We can now use the exported parameters in the inspector to adjust the markers to our liking. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.